I want to touch base on V14 for a minute. This is obviously an indication of how quickly we will get to the RoboTaxi future, but it is the best way to do that by looking at the current software stack experiences there. I shared some of my experiences a while ago, and I think a lot of the early reviews were super favorable. Oh my gosh, this thing's great. Maybe a little phantom breaking, but I shared a post that was maybe a little more bearish than those early ones. My experience was just not ideal, I would say. I mean, it was nothing too terrible, but just not being aggressive enough in some situations and then conversely being way too aggressive in others, mm -hmm. uh, particularly around speeding. Most people are finding that this has maybe not lived up to some of the hype from the early days. Admittedly, there's a huge amount of capability improvement and I don't want to downplay that at all. I think mm -hmm. the types of issues that I'm experiencing are really comfort related and not safety, which is a super important distinction. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to offer that question up to you. How's your experience with B14 been so far and how does it compare to your expectations before you received it? I originally got 14.1.3 and most of my impressions were based on that. For those who are not aware, Tesla rolls out a software and then if they have to make a fix, they do a dot. So it's like a dot change. And if it's like 14.1.1, 2 or 3, it means it's small changes within that group. If it's something really big, then they do a bigger dot like 14.2 or 14.3 or whatever. So I was like two iterations in when I first got it. And that one had issues with, I guess you'd call it jerkiness, uncertainty. Sometimes I don't know how to exactly describe it. Mathematically, it's called jerk and snap, which is basically different derivatives of your velocity, whatever. So what that means is it would move a lane, but it would do it really fast and then stop it. It's very jarring from a standpoint of being in there. They can dial those things down. And when dot four came out, they actually did that. So it's better, but not perfect yet. The reason why they roll it out this way is it gives them a chance to get a much broader audience in a lot of different scenarios to get this data back. I started with that on my Model 3. My biggest issues were the uncertainties, the jerkiness, the rapid motions, the speeding is probably the one of the biggest ones. And the continued problem with the navigation database and mismatching to reality and what does the car do in those circumstances. And so those are opportunity areas for Tesla to fix, in my opinion. My other thoughts are a lot of the early testers tend to be very tech oriented and focus on the technology. And they're talking about whether or not the weights could be this way or did it do this? And they're trying to give that kind of feedback back to the team, which is very valuable. I approach it slightly different. I approach it from the standpoint of, if you were a consumer buying this, would it work for you? Would you like it? Would you have that confidence? And to do that, not only do I drive it myself, and by the way, I used to be an instructor pilot, see and evaluate how students were doing with their flying. Are they safe for the mission? And if they had passengers, would they make them sick? <laughs> Could they <laughs> refine it a little bit? And I've taken people that don't have much experience with it and I've taken them into the vehicle and had them try it out and get their feedback. Right now with the state that it's at, I think it still needs refinement before it would be something that a lot of people would really want to own just because of that jerkiness. I think that's important for Tesla to also understand as they continue to develop this. Yeah, I think that distinction you made between people who love the tech and are thinking about what it's doing and are more focused on that as opposed to, hey, I'm just a regular person driving my car. Mm -hmm. Are these decisions good or not? I think that's a huge distinction. My wife, for example, not a Tesla fan. She loves driving the car. She never uses FSD. She's like, why would you use that when it's just such a fun car to drive? So, you know, if I put that on her and one example, you mentioned the navigation system. So I was in rush hour traffic, just picking up a pizza from my local shop just hit return. And rather than turning right onto the main road, it wanted to do this convoluted left on a different road. Yeah. <laughs> Traffic was backed up for half a mile. There was no chance it was getting in the left turn lane, but I let it sit there for a while, see if it might try to figure it out. And it was clear that it was just going to stay there and try to turn left into this wall of cars when it could just simply reroute, turn right, make another right, get back home that way, which is the way that a normal human would have handled the situation. Mm -hmm. A normal person trying FSD, they hear all this hype about it, then that's their experience. They'd be like, well, oh, this is annoying, I'm taking over. So I think there's just too many of those issues right now. Now I would say I'm not super concerned about them. I think the pace of improvement, I remember similar types of issues with V13 when it launched. And then as we got into later dot releases, I just loved it, was using it pretty much all the time with a few exceptions where I knew certain parts of my neighborhood it would just handle it worse than I would. So I would just take over for comfort. But I think when it gets to the point where regular people see the value of it and it's actually doing what they would want mm -hmm. without the, 
annoying jerk or navigation issues. That's when I think Tesla has its FSD chat GPT type of moment, but I don't think we can really get there until it solves a problem for people. Yeah. It is interesting when you think about the history of FSD and where we've come with the various different versions. I started testing it back in nine or 10. So it's been a while. The things that we were worried about early on was, would it stay in the lane? Would it even stop at the stop sign? <laughs> Those kinds of things. Those were our concern areas and whether or not it stayed on this turn to go left or not. The fact that it was even there, we were impressed. Yeah. And it's really matured a lot to the point now we are talking about many of the concern areas are preferences. Mm -hmm. I think that is a much harder thing to solve because you may think that I want to be in the left lane and I want to be in the left lane for a while because it's a turn coming up in two miles. I might think, no, I'm going to stay in the right lane until I get to the last minute. That's fine with me. Either one is not wrong if it makes it to the turn and turns. It's just your preference versus my preference. I think that is really becoming more and more of the big issue. And hopefully if they get the navigation thing a little bit better solved, whether it's the database or a different way for us to interact with the car, if you could talk to it and say, hey, just don't worry about it. Let's go right. And the car does that. That's more natural. It's like you and me in a car. And I just say, hey, Matt, just go ahead and turn right. If they can get to those kinds of points, then it will really help not only solve the navigation problems, but it will also help with those preference things. And if it can remember that all the time, one of my sisters has FSD and it drives her crazy because there's a particular route that she wants to take to go home. And yeah. it doesn't take that route. And even if it's three minutes faster to go the route FSD wants, she wants to go the other route. And it would be really nice if she could tell the car and it would remember that, okay, we're always going to take this route unless there's something dramatic that I can't take that route. So if they can get it to that point, I think it would be great. And then of course, I think what everybody wants, the big chat GPT moment, like you said, is when they say, yeah, you can sleep. Do you think that they get there with a more integration down the road where it's actually able to input a conversation like that and somehow interface with the self-driving computer software and make those types of preference decisions? I think the answer to that is first, yes. If they could integrate it into the systems of the vehicle so that it can not only just talk to you or give you answers, but it can actually take action. I think that would be really important. This does touch on another one of those hot topic items within the Tesla community. And that has more to do with what's on the vote right now is whether or not Tesla should take a stake in XAI and bring them together or not, not do that and just build on their own AI in-house. I think it's pretty clear that XAI and Tesla are gonna to have to work together and I think it would be good. And if they did that, then they could bring Grok in and Grok would probably play a role in other things too, like Optimus and so forth. I think it's only natural and I think it's actually necessary. They have to because you can imagine that situation where now the car is truly your chauffeur. You get into it, you talk to it, and it responds to what you want to do. It remembers your preferences. And if you, on a whim, say, instead of going to the post office, let's go to the grocery store instead. And it does that just like we said it. I think that would be momentous. Another thing, since I do a lot of robotaxi rides, and by the way, interestingly enough, the robotaxi software seems to still be, even with 14.1.4, better. So there is still a difference between the two and it handles situations better than 14.1.4. With my RoboTaxi rides, I've done a lot with international people from different countries that wanted to try RoboTaxi. And if you had a Grok that could talk to them in their own language and help them out, point out things as they're driving around and make that seamless connection, I think that would be huge. There's really big opportunity for Grok or something like a Grok integrated into the vehicle that can actually take actions based on what you say.